fatalities, brutalities, and flawless victories. This is my review for 2021's Mortal Kombat. A B N. It's headphones, Neil. What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and in this case it's going to be the 2021 film Mortal Kombat. So, I had a chance to watch the film on HBO Max streaming, so I'm still not comfortable going to the theaters quite yet, but um, having watched it at home and given it its once over watching, I am generally impressed and happy with the results of this film. They did a very good job to stay generally true to the source material as far as the fight sequences go. It is of course hard to translate um, a video game with a very minimal storyline into a film, especially a single film like this, especially when there are um, a bunch of story arcs going on that can be translated but require more than one film. So this, and this is something I read about online, but this is kind of a translation of what we saw in the old, I think, I want to say 95 version of the film where Lord, I'm sorry, not Lord, but Shang Tsung is trying to stop the Earth Warriors from fighting in the tournament by taking them out before the actual tournament so that he officially wins the 10th tournament. So that's kind of what we see in this version of the film where rather than eventually making it to the Mortal Kombat tournament because Shang Tsung was unable to take them out or call them into the tournament to pick warriors that he knew would lose or that he felt that he knew would lose um, he tries to take them out prior to the competition so he wins by default or there's nobody who's actually been picked to pl uh, participate in the tournament so no one stands, against, stands a chance against warriors like Goro um, 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 not Melina, but the other one of the other ladies, um, and a, f a few other characters, a few of the other bad guys. We don't see all of the necessarily characters that we saw from the first film, so that's quite all right. In this, we have enough of the warriors that of uh, characters that you know from the first and second film, so um, it works itself out, and I'm. As we're talking, I'm trying to remember the name of the character that Liu Kang fights against in the film. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, overall, some of the things that I like, though, is that we have, as far as some of the good um, translations of it, for example, we have the origin, origin of the Sub-Zero versus Scorpion feud. So we see that um, Sub-Zero has been taking out a lot of the um, clan that... Um, Scorpion, uh, not Scorpion, but um, Hanzo something or other is a part of and ultimately kills him. He ends up going to hell and returns later in the film as Scorpion with the powers of hell that he's able to control and um, use that to his advantage. Um, one of the things that I was unsure about but actually ended up kind of working for me here is that um, rather than following the story of um, for example, uh, Johnny Cage in the original Mortal Kombat film, we follow an MMA fighter who's kind of past his prime but still able to fight in the form of Cole. Um, and while originally I thought that I wouldn't like having to follow him, um, by the end of the film and how they presented it with the ending, um, I actually liked it a lot, lot more. And especially when they say that he won his belt from Eddie Tobias. So this is a ni nice little Easter egg because Eddie Tobias is the combination of um, the names of the creators of Mortal Kombat. So it's nice to see a little bit of love shown there. Um, and of course this, well, I, I didn't see any indication that this would be presented later in maybe a potential sequel, but um, we might even get a noob cybot in a future film if they do end up making maybe a second or third film. Um, the character that Liu Kang fights in the film I guess is a version of that sort of. Um, so if you've seen the Noob Saibot character that's the kind of the look and feel of the character that um, Liu Kang fights against. So 
overall, th little things like that generally were for me in the film, um, and there was one really good one later in the film. Um, in this film, we do get what I felt was a better origin story for Jax's arms, though. So we have um, Jax helping Liu Kang, or not Liu Kang, but um, Cole and his family escape from Sub Zero. And so Jax and Sub Zero end up fighting, and we have the first. Um, I want to. It wasn't a fatality because Jax didn't end up dying. I want to kind of say that's probably the first fight with Sub Zero and Scorpion, but in this case, we have what I guess is a brutality because we have Sub Zero freezing Jax's arm and arms and ripping them off and being left for dead. So with that, we have Jax ultimately being taken in by Liu Kang and Lord Raiden and the Order of the Light, I think it was called, and being revived and given new arms. So that generally was a better. Um, presentation than what we saw in Mortal Kombat Annihilation where Jax was um, I mean he was generally given new arms but he wanted to have the new arms which kind of felt um, so I don't know that it felt like it was something he would have done willingly although I mean he was generally presented to want to act like he wanted to have get those arms so that kind of um i guess it was supposed to work um in general but um in this case i, I don't know for some reason in this version of the film i liked it a lot better so um when you're watching the film um this is one of those things where it was basically in general this film was presented better and they kind of fixed all the issues that we saw in the original films um the one of the better characters though um that i was able to continue following along with and i'm glad they presented well and fully hashed out was kano so he they kept the general same storyline from the first film where he was a part of the un criminal underworld he was didn't necessarily drunk but an over-the-top character who didn't care about anyone or anything so his portrayal here was very well done but I also liked um, his when he said Kano wins it felt very much along the lines of the original video games when they said Kano wins and in general his character worked well because they actually were able to bring or they implemented his laser eye when he was able to find his arcana which is one of the downsides of the film um so actually i'll bring bring that up now is that they throughout the film they or not throughout the film but probably three-fourths of the film they bring up something called the arcana which is which is in, inside everybody and i guess gives various fighters pick for immortal combat their all the superpowers or ultra powers basically superpowers as kano like to call throughout the film but in the presentation of it, it felt along the lines of midichlorians from Star Wars. They tried to um, present something and introduce an idea that didn't really feel like it worked. Um, and although it was generally presented better than animalities in Mortal Kombat Annihilation, it just felt like it was something that was shoehorned in that didn't need to be. So if they said that once you're picked for Mortal Kombat, everybody has a uh, latent ability that gives them an edge in the competition and it manifests itself differently in every person that would have been good enough they didn't really need to define it or give it a name so that's the one thing that kind of lost me there but in presenting it in the film i mean the presentation visually for everybody's abilities was well done it's just that they did not really need to call it the arcana so one of those things that didn't need to really work um and then in a related thing when we have Lou or sorry in a little bit i'll mention that but um one of the interesting comparisons that i thought for the first film as i continue down that path is that um in the first film raiden was trying to had to convince all the very characters that the fate of earth realm is in their hands so in this one, they kind of skip over all of that storyline, and Liu Kang tells everyone that the fate of Earthrealm is in their hands. They have to do something. They have to do what they can to save it. 
it's not that Lord Raiden is going to not help them, but he's going to kind of be the Obi, continue to be the Obi Wan of the movie and guide them in order to help them gain their victory. So that was kind of that uh, line in the sand between Raiden and Shang Tsung, where Shang Tsung is um, overtly trying to have his um, fighters take out the Earth Realm fighters, whereas Raiden is preparing them and teaching them what they need to do so that they can be victorious regardless of who or what fighters are being thrown at him or them um, so from there um, we generally have more and more items that are um, uh, present as far as uh, good fight teams um, um, fatalities, brutalities, all of that good stuff. So things like um, Kung Lao's hat and his fighting was very well done. So with him throwing it um, as an attack um, weapon was generally well done. Um, I liked his brutality with sewing the or sawing the character in half. That um, and I already forgot who he was fighting. Whether it was Melina or one of the other characters, but. Um, that was probably why I'm calling one, that a uh, second brutality because that was um, one of those scenes that was very, very gruesome. And I mean, I kind of was anticipating that they were gonna, or kind of hoping that they were gonna do that, knowing that that was one of his finishing moves. But um, I wasn't quite expecting it to be quite that gory, so um, I was glad to see that. Um, I liked in the present with. Um, and Liu Kang's fight during that same scene where um, he brings out his animality in a dragon. So one of the things that I was kind of hoping for was um, while they didn't, while they did um, bring up fatalities and flawless victories, I was kind of hoping that instead of, or at this point, at this point, I was kind of hoping that instead of continuing down the um, line and discussions of that the arcana that they would bring up animalities that um, while the fighters are able to get their arcana to present their um, um, special moves that eventually they will be able to bring up their animality which is a progression of um, that their arcana so I don't know something like that well, I want, kind of wanted to see something like that but maybe that's something that they're going to bring up in a later film um but eventually cole who was having trouble finding his arcana eventually finds his and by this point prior to finishing the film i was getting to think that he was going to become a mix of a johnny cage like character and a baraka character because he ends up getting blades which look like are built into his arms so but that actually kind of ties more into his MMA fighting abilities. So um, overall, the character generally worked out well. And his, his armor kind of looked a little bit like Aquaman's armor. So a little bit of strangeness there. But overall, by this point, by the time he gets his special powers, I ended up liking his character and continued to enjoy watching us fight, especially since we now know that he was a descendant of Scorpion's clan. So. Um, that tying together generally just would work for me. And of course, you can't have um, a scorpion like character without having him say, Get over here and spewing flame or fire, fire flame from his face. So, we the movie pays off really well in what when the final fight scene originally started between Scorpion, Sub Zero, and Cole, but end up ending up being between um, the revenge grudge match between Scorpion and Sub Zero. So um, initially, from the trailer, I was expecting the get over here to not be as good because it didn't quite sound like the original. But watching it in the scope of the film, it actually worked very well. So I actually liked that it sounded pretty good. Um, I liked the presentation of it, the pro the original. Um, beta version of it at the beginning of the film and then the final version here at the end um, and then the general fight scenes we see that Cole and him are working together we see his realization that his clan is um, going to live on so all in all that worked very well and then we get the 
um, an even further iteration of Sub-Zero's power. So originally we see his freezing thing with um, Sub-Zero's wife and son. Um, when he freezes them in place, so you kind of are, ho are hoping that, um, or that's basically that was a nod to the, to the video game where you can freeze a, the, your opponent in place. And then we see him freezing Jax's, the bullet in Jax's gun. We have him creating a um, frozen blood arrow in, um, I think it was a fight scene with him, in the first fight with him and Scorpion, so all of that. But then in the second fight scene, at the end of the film, we have him take that even further so we have him creating the wall of ice to throw the character through we have him um creating um an ice statue of him while he um um basically creates that statue and exits out of the bat um when scorpion is attacking him so very it's hard to explain without having played the video game or seeing the movie but essentially you have basically that what you see um, Sub-Zero due to so Scorpion's wife and son in the beginning of the film. He does that to himself at the end of the film and then exits out the back to um, kind of create a shadow ice version of himself. So a lot of his abilities were, or a lot of Sub-Zero's abilities and powers were translated well into the game and presented very well. So all in all, the movie pays off by the time you get through it. And of course, we have a nice little stinger at the end of the film, prior to the credits, where we the, the um, tournament is still needs to happen. So essentially, Lord Raiden did and um, Liu Kang did their jobs, and um, they were able to hold off Shang Tsung's abil or uh, warriors, and they were able to um find their arcana and special powers so now it's a matter of fighting in the actual tournament tournament um which i assume if they do end up making this sequel would happen in outworld but um they um basically or the end of the film sets up finding more earth realm warriors so the one character that they did not have in this film was Johnny Cage. So the stinger at the end of the film is that um, Cole is going to find more uh, fighters, and his next place to go is Hollywood, um, where he's gonna, where they have a poster of um, one of, of Johnny Cage in one of his poster in one of his movies, which for some reason it looks like um, the poster for Duke Nukem. So I don't know if maybe that movie that he was that Johnny Cage was in is like a Duke Nukem style movie or maybe a movie they made, made of the video game just kind of as a nod to the video game um, industry as a whole but um, if they do make a sequel and I hope that they do they bring in um, Johnny Cage which I which was my anticipation for this film but watching it and watching this film as is it actually worked <laughs> so I'm guessing for the next film we can anticipate um, the actual Mortal Kombat tournament. Um, so one of the characters we did not see was the Emperor Shao Kahn, and so basically the characters, some of the characters that we got in Mortal Kombat Annihilation were the characters that we did not see here. So I'm guessing that the next film, or even if they potentially make a trilogy of films, a third film, um, is going to be... Um, the introduction of those various other characters that we didn't see here um, and then even characters like Montaro or maybe even the female Goro or characters like that um, so essentially from, and from my point of view this movie was very well done they stayed true to um, a lot of the fighting the special moves and the fatalities and brutalities and all of that that we saw in the video games and they presented a story that was generally well done um, to the point where I can see the, um, them green lighting a sequel to have the actual tournament um, bring in Johnny Cage and the various other characters and continue the story. So essentially, if you want, as a final comparison between the original Mortal Kombat and this one, this film essentially fixes a lot of the issues that you might see think of from the first one so you have the budget to have the special moves um 
done in a better way, better fight sequences, um, better actors to pull off those various fight sequences. Um, a good tradition or a good introduction for Liu Kang and his uh, special moves, um, bringing up animalities without actually calling it an animality. Um, um, Kong Lao and his hat. So and then so we're not gonna have him late in the second movie, I would imagine, just because um, he ended up getting killed. But I think and I think also Shang Tsung stole his energy so that was actually a pretty good graphical representation of that so um while i didn't have any negative issues with that in the first film i did like that they improved upon that to make it look better here so um gen in, in general watching this film while they we do not get into the actual mortal Kombat tournament we have a lot of fight sequences that are well choreographed and well presented before and after everyone gets their special moves um, and in general a, a good film to watch um, especially with improvement in CGI and I know that the first film had a issue with the Goro suit looking very cartoonish and rubbery so they fixed that here as well so basically what the 25 26 years brought us between the first film and this was the ability to introduce various graphics and CGI effects and make all the various fight sequences and fatalities that much more gruesome and realistic and able to be implemented well in the various forms. Um, so I might end up rewatching the film with a maybe with a more critical eye, but generally to see if there's anything else I missed. Um, I know the one thing I didn't see was Kano doing his rolling. Um, move I guess that he we see in the video game so that's probably one of the more sillier things to probably present so I'm kind of on one hand I'm kind of glad to see that they didn't do it but I actually because I didn't outwardly see it or was looking out for it um, I kind of want to rewatch the movie to see if maybe they did some other thing to make that um, bring it up or present it well but overall if you're a fan of Mortal Kombat I want to say that this was generally well done except for the whole Arcana bit. So if I was to grade the film, I'd probably give it about a grade of a 95%. Um, it, solid A. Overall, it was very well done. The story was good. So if you are if you are hung up like me on um, Johnny Cage not being in the film and following a random MMA fighter named Cole, that is actually going to be a point that doesn't really matter in the film it is actually very well presented and done well so it actually became a good high point for me and one that i generally enjoyed so um between that um the good choreograph fight scenes the fatalities and brutalities uh, one animality and all of that the film generally pays good tribute and homage to the original video games um, the only thing that I, like I mentioned, didn't like when I'm taking away a few points is the whole bit about the Arcana. Um, it was fine if it was brought up once or twice, but when they kept talking about it, it kept, it felt like it was going, going on a bit too much. So, um, for me, that's one of those things where, um, if they don't really bring it up in the next film, then it'll be quite all right. Um, I guess except for the point to... Um, introduce Johnny Cage to it, I guess, if he doesn't already have his speed move, I guess, or if maybe he already has it, so they don't need to bring it up or something like that, but it's something that they don't, I feel that they don't really need to continue to um, bring up, since most of the fighters, as far as I can say right now from the first game, have what they need, so um, we'll take it for, so that's all there is for that. Um, and I know that there was a reptile in the movie, which I guess was okay. It kind of worked out with the acid, if I remember right. It was a minor part of the film, but it was done well enough. They didn't, because they, um, I think reptile in the first game might have been a special, a secret character to get to maybe in the second game, but they didn't really spend too much time on him, but they did spend a good amount of time on the lizardness and the CGI-ness of it all. So overall that worked. So, um, granted we didn't get to see him in his green suit, so maybe that's something they're going to bring up in the next film. So 
overall things like that they paid attention to good detail so i know it definitely looks like they're setting up for a sequel and like the first one was a self-contained film to the point where the characters were introduced they we saw some of their my fighting moves in the fight sequence they built a story around it to make it a self-contained film whereas this one feels like they're setting up for at least a two film franchise potentially a trilogy depending on what they want to do maybe introduce some of the later um um storylines into it i guess um so maybe have the tournament in the second film and the maybe the fallout from it in the third film or um basically i might need i, I would have to look at some of the later storylines again to see what happens later on or maybe tie things together or, i don't know something along those lines where um they bring a tie in some of the later story arcs for the mortal kombat franchise so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments feedbacks um something i missed or corrections or some of your favorite parts of the film you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website is headphones dot reviews for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff and of course you can get um early access to upcoming content bonus content uh, bonus content uh hot take reviews for stuff that i'm in the progress of watching and things like that by visiting the patreon at patreon.com slash patel n01 but that is all for this particular review thanks for tuning in and until next time